Hi, my name's Laurie Ridgeway. I'm from LR Silver Jewellery. I'm here today to answer some questions from social media for you. Okay, the first question's from Twitter, from at Louisa Rankin 87. Is silver clay worth it? Um, yes, silver clay is worth it, in my opinion. Um, it adds to the rest of your jewellery making. Um, is it a good alternative to using silver metal sheets? It depends on what you want to do. Um, silver clay is easier to work in a smaller space, but I think it's a, actually um, an enhancement to silver sheets, so it's a little bit different, but it can add, especially where you're using lots of texture and detail and small parts. Is it expensive? It's slightly more expensive than um, silver sheet, uh, but the time that it takes to use it is less. Um, and the equipment that you need to use it is less, so overall it works out roughly about the same. Question from Facebook from Vic Wilkshire. With a Prometheus programmed kiln, is it possible to reprogram a schedule if you wanted to increase the temperature or time a bit if you find pieces are not firing well? There is a free program that you can use if you've got something directly specific, but if you don't want to use that, what you'll find is on the pre-programmable programs, um, if you increase your temperature a little bit or you increase your time a little bit, it generally stores, in the ones I've used, it generally stores what you've changed. So when you go back on again, that change should still be there in your program. Okay, second question from Casey April. Can you use raw crystals and gemstones or will they get damaged? Or what's best to use when wanting to add a little extra sparkle? Um, generally, I would avoid using raw crystals or gemstones, um, mainly because they, uh, some of them can't stand the heat because it's a high heat that you're using in the kiln. Um, secondly, a lot of the natural crystals have inclusions in them and if they've got something, a little inclusion or something in them, they may crack. The best thing to use are CZ stones. Um, if you check anywhere, you can use anything that says CZ. Um, and a lot of the new Swarovski range you can use as well. What you do need to watch out for is to test it first because some of the colours don't stand, withstand the heat. So for example, blue and green are quite difficult to get because when you put them in the high heat they generally turn to a brownie colour. But it's worth, if you want to put some sparkle in, buy some CZ stones and test a couple with the heat and then see how they turn out afterwards. So another question from Facebook, Michelle Brenton. That maybe this could be stretched to count as a metal K question. If I bought a hallmarked ring core and then embellished it by adding metal to it, would I then have to get it hallmarked again or would it be okay as long as the metal was an equivalent or higher purity? I'm not a hallmarking expert. The best thing to do is to contact your um, assay office and ask them. But generally, um, if, somebody, if something's being hallmarked, you need to make sure you send everything that's added to that piece to the hallmarking office so that they can check that the purity of everything is okay. So in my opinion, I would send that back to the assay office to get it re-hallmarked. Uh, question from Facebook from Rachel Shedd. How can you prevent thin filigree silver clay pieces made with syringe breaking after firing with a hand torch? Many thanks. Uh, it's generally recommended that you don't fire syringe clay with a hand torch. Uh, because it's actually thinner than the clay, it's more porous, um, so it's actually more liable to break in. The best thing to do with, with syringe clay is to fire it in a kiln so that it sinters a lot stronger, the temperature is, is higher, the temperature is more con consistent and the molecules sinter together a lot better. So that's the only way really you're going to stop it from breaking after firing. Now on to Instagram and from Louis Asimi. How much does the clay shrink during firing, e.g. for sizing rings? Thanks. Um, different clays shrink at different amounts and different kilns will also shrink at different amounts. Um, it totally depends on what you want to do. Um, so for a ring, I generally personally make thin rings three sizes larger and for uh, thicker rings I make it four sizes larger. But generally what you really need to do is to test the way that you fire with the clay that you use in order to work out the shrinkage because it is different with every single clay and it's different with every single kiln and it's different with every single program that you use in each kiln. A uh, question from Instagram, handcrafted by Anna. Is it easy to manipulate? Yes, it is very easy to manipulate. There's a lot of things that you can do with the clay. You can sculpt it, you can texture it, you can build it. It's very, very easy to use. If you've never used it before, I would recommend that you find a local course near to you and go on there because they will show you how to handle the clay and how to get the best out of it and how to store it to make sure it doesn't dry out and, and things like that that you won't generally pick up from a video. 
Uh, Instagram question from Claire Healy. What's the difference between the different metal clays? Which is the best? Um, I generally say that the different metal clays are a bit like tea bags. So you pick the one that suits you the best. They all have different handling times. They have different feels. Um, they work slightly differently. They last slightly differently. Each one is, diff is better for a slightly different thing. So the best thing to do really is to have, a, have an experiment, play with them and find the one that you like the best. Instagram question from glasspeople.nz. Hi, what is the difference between Art Clay and PMC brands, please? Um, as I said before, they're all slightly different in different ways. PMC is, is cheaper than Art Clay Silver per gram. Okay, Instagram question from Handcrafted by Anna. How long do you torch fire PMC for? And is four millimeters too thick to torch fire? You should be okay with four millimeters thick. It's the diameter of the piece that you need to concentrate on. Generally, if it's larger than a 50 pence piece, you can't keep the heat even all the way over it in order to sinter the, the molecules properly. Um, how long do you torch fire it for? It depends on the size of the piece. What you need to do is keep an eye on your orange glow and you need to make sure that orange glow goes from anywhere between two minim minutes minimum up to about seven, seven minutes for a larger piece. Okay, general questions from the website. Um, how do you fire precious metal clay three with a torch? So what you need to do is put your piece onto a block um, and then you need to heat the torch, heat the piece gently with the torch. Just make sure that you get the hottest part of the flame onto your piece. Um, once the piece, the piece will catch fire, which is all the bur binder burning off. Once that, the binder's burnt off, it will go a white colour and then it will start to glow pink. Once it starts to glow pink, that's when you start your timer. That's what, when you're actually the sintering is starting to take place. So what you then need to do is keep an eye on that colour and make sure that the, the colour stays and the torch colour stays across the whole piece. So you move your torch gently across the whole piece. If it looks like it's going liquidy inside or you get a silver flash on the top, it's too hot so you just need to move your torch away. One of the ways to test whether or not it's done is to move your torch completely out of the way and wait till your piece goes grey. Then move your torch back again. If the orange glow comes up immediately, then your piece is nearly sintered and just give it another 30 seconds. If it's not, then just keep going for another minute and do that test again a bit later on. What are the benefits of using precious metal clay? Uh, precious metal clay can add a lot of enhancement to your jewellery making, especially when you want to use fine texture or you want to do things like sculpturing um, and things like that. Um, it's a, like an alternative to wax carving and casting. So instead of carving something into your wax and sending it away for casting, you can carve it in your precious metal clay, fire it and you've got it straight away so you don't need to wait for it to come back from the casters. When using the new programmable kiln, which program would I use for PMC sheet? Generally, because there's quite a lot of different types of clay, the best thing to do is to check the leaflet inside your clay. But generally between, you need, as long as you fire it from between a minimum of 650 and you don't go too close to the melting point of silver which is about 930-ish, um, as long as you fire it somewhere in between there, um, then it will be fine. Um, and you, all you need to do is just check which is the best length of time for yourself. But generally just check the leaflet inside your, your packet of clay. How would you fire silver on a gas stove? Also, can you use an oven that heats up to 500 degrees? To fire silver on a gas stove, you can buy a mesh um, that you pop on top of your grill. There's another little mesh that you get that you can fold into a little box. So when you put your mesh on top of your um, hob, turn it on full and wait until it starts to glow orange. When it glows orange, pop your piece of clay onto the orange glow. And then if you've got one of the ones that folds into a box, pop that on the top just to give it a little bit more of a, a heat surround and then leave it for 10 minutes. That's how you fire it on top of a hob. Can I use an oven that heats up to 500 degrees? No, you can't, because the minimum firing temperature for the silver clays is 650 degrees. So you need something that goes up to at least that. General website question, can the kiln shelf be cut into smaller pieces? I wouldn't advise it, because you don't know how much dust and things are, are gonna get out of the kiln, that, the kiln shelf that you've already got. Plus, you can buy kiln shelves for the sizes of your kilns uh, in all different sizes, so it's worth having a look at what's available on the market. General website question, what else would I need to purchase if I buy a kiln? If you buy a kiln, you do need to have kiln posts and you need to have a kiln shelf. If you're going to use base metal clays, you generally need to have a little uh, sterling silver pot with activated carbon in it as well so that you can fire the base metal clays in your kiln. 
general website question, what are the differences between all the kilns? There's several different kilns and they've all got slight differences. They all basically do the same job. Um, some of them are programmable, some of them are not. Some of them you just set the temperature that you want to heat it, it to heat up to and then you time it when it gets there and then switch it off. Um, but there will be a video coming up in the future that explains the details between the different kilns.